Hello, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all on good form. I've just left the office and I'm heading to a customer handover. We do a customer handover with the customers post commissioning. So the engineers that are on site will do a physical commission, which is where they set the heat pump parameters up, they balance the system, check the delta T across the radiators, do an appliance function check and make sure everything is hunky-dory and then I will go or one of the other engineers will go to site, check everything over, give it a once over and answer any questions to the customer as well as give all the documentation that they need for, um, for MCS purposes. So that, that's my mission this afternoon. So I'm just going to head out and, and, and see this customer. The, the appliance has been running for a full week now. The guys finished it last week. It is the week before Christmas. Bit of a quieter week this week. I think we've only got three installs going in um, and, and, and brushing up any odds and, odds and sods that we need to do before we shut down for the Christmas break. So I'm going to try and keep these videos short and snappy. I'll give you a full overview of the system when we arrive on site from the heat pump right the way, way through to the um, radiators in the system. And, and, and what the customer is to expect. Just some facts and figures on it. This is from memory, I've just had a quick look at the file. We have got a heat loss at design outdoor temperature of 4.6 kilowatts. The design outdoor temperature of this area is minus 3.7 and the design indoor temperature is 21 degrees. So that means that when it's minus 3.7 outside to maintain an indoor temperature of 21 degrees, the heat pump needs to output 4.7 kilowatts. The maximum output of this heat pump is 4.9 kilowatts at minus 3.7. So we have a little bit of grace there. Right, I've just arrived on site and this is the house we're heating behind me. So it is a very typical British style home. Uh, three bedrooms. It is in a terrace uh, format. So obviously we've got houses that way and houses that way. Um, it was built in 1952, it's never had central heating, so this is first time central heating. The lady that lives here has just survived with a gas fire um, for all of her, well she was the second owner, she moved into it in 1955, so since 1955 she's only had a gas fire. So this is first time central heating for her. So we've, um, in partnership with another company, we've put solar PV on and we've done the full heat pump system. So I'll take you inside so you can have a look around. So this is the cylinder cupboard. It's a 200 litre slimline cylinder. We have piped it direct. So we've got the Blimo valve. We've essentially got the flow coming from the heat pump to the Blimo. And then it goes straight to the radiators and returns via the global energy filter back to the heat pump. So we managed to just about get away without putting a volumizer on this. It is open loop. All the downstairs radiators, hallway radiator, landing radiator and bathroom radiator are um, on lock shields, no TRVs, and then all of the bedrooms have got TRVs in them. So having those open loop radiators downstairs as well as the bathroom and landing and all the pipe work added together as well as the heat pump volume, it does equate to 110 litres of free system volume and that is roughly what we need for this unit um, to, to prevent cycling and allow enough water volume for defrost. So we've just about got away with it and uh, it'll make for a really efficient system. Okay, so we're at the rear of the property where we've situated the heat pump. And if you just look above my head, you'll see the solar panels. So that was done by a partner company and that'll go a fair way to help in electricity bills for the customer. Uh, I'll spin the camera around so you can see the heat pump. So we've got it bang on the middle of the house there. It's currently running at the minute, so you will be able to hear it. Just nicely sneaked it in, so the fan is just above that planter there, so there's plenty of air um, area for it to get rid of its cold air. Nice big back garden. We've obviously come off the back of the unit with the flexible hoses, and then straight into some trunking and taking it to first floor level to go across to the um, cylinder. All of the downstairs radiators have just got lock shields on, no TRVs. The reason why I've had to do that, well, part of the reason is because we've not got a volumizer on this, so I had to guarantee the correct system volume. So if we have all the downstairs radiators plus the landing radiator and the bathroom radiator without control on them, that gives me a guaranteed loop and volume of water to work with. So the heat pump 
won't cycle and it'll have enough water to work with to defrost but also it gives the customer that control in the bedrooms if they prefer their bedrooms cooler they can use the trvs in the bedroom to control that temperature to limit it now certain houses i will still put trvs downstairs even if i am aiming for an open loop system if there's a risk of solar gain now if you look at this house it is in a terrace format like i said at the front so there isn't that much glass facing south or due south so the chances of solar gain are quite low so i was comfortable to do it in this situation so there you go that's it and as you can tell it really is quite a quiet unit right so i thought i'd just give you a quick walk around um in the property so we're in the kitchen that's a radiator in the kitchen. This is just to give you an idea of the sort of sizes of radiator you need with a heat pump. These radiators are designed for a mean water temperature of 40 degrees. So effectively the actual average temperature across the radiator will be 40 degrees at minus 3.7, the outdoor design temperature, and it'll keep them at 21 degrees inside. So if I show you, this is the biggest room, the lounge. We've got a K2 rad there, and then we've got another one at the other side and you'll see i'm just doing my tests at the minute i've got my testo smart probes on um so i've got a sensor in the radiator there and then i've got a sensor there which is measuring the room temperature so as you can see 31.7 mean um radiator temperature is maintaining a 21 degree room temperature in the house so that's what we call weather compensation so these radiators are changing temperature according to the weather outside and because it's relatively mild today um, the heat pump's been able to turn its flow temperature down to match um, to make the heat emitters match the heat loss in these conditions so the overall efficiency of the heat pump will go up so i've just got home and i thought i'd do a quick brief overview of the system so as you saw, it was quite a typical house you would see in Great Britain. It uh, was 70 years old almost, not particularly well insulated. Yes, they'd had the loft insulated and double glazing done, but it, it was a kind of house you would see on any street in the UK. And it was relatively easy to do that installation because it was a blank canvas, because they didn't have central heating. It meant that we could just go in there and do exactly what we needed to do to make it an efficient system. So it's all new pipe work, new radiators, cylinder and heat pump. The design was a um, based on a flow temperature of 40 degrees at minus 3.7 the design conditions. So the estimated SCOP or seasonal coefficient of performance is 3.9. I think we'll get better than that. We have piped it direct as, as you heard in the video and it is open loop. So there'll be minimal losses there. We are fully weather compensated. The customer's keen to make it efficient. She understands how she needs to run the system. It is gonna be on 24 hours a day, just modulating that flow temperature to keep her warm. She's got the solar panels to give her that coverage during the day to, to keep the um, run cost down. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs over the next year. And we'll probably revisit, revisit her and see how she's got on. Uh, if you've got any questions, just fire them down below. If you would have done anything differently, um, if you've got any questions on the weather compensation or that open loop design, um, please please, uh, please ask away. At positive or negative, we're, we're, you know, we're open for the discussion. Everybody's learning every day. If you haven't subscribed and you can do, please do so. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.